It's been a while since Stormworks Industrial DLC came out, but nobody is talking about how to refine oil. That's strange, because it's a cash cow. I mean, it's risk-free, crude sells for cheap all around the map, and jet and diesel sell for expensive all around the map. So why is nobody doing it? Because it's weird and undocumented. There are some demonstrations on how to do it that do it the wrong way, and throw an enormous amount of energy at it so it's not profitable. Fortunately for you and your insatiable curiosity about how oil gets refined in an indie game that nobody plays, I figured it all out for you, so I'm going to go ahead and teach it to you now. Obviously, this is an island base. You can just buy this base and slap it down on any island you please, and uh, it does all the work for you. Buy some crude out in the ocean somewhere. There's loads of places that sell it, and then come back later for your jet and your diesel. Now, we can spawn jet fuel. And we can spawn diesel. It's built into the price of the vehicles we build. There, there's some diesel. But the problem is, we can't spawn any oil. And this is why nobody knows how to refine oil. Because if you want to test how to refine oil, you gotta go get oil every single time you tweak anything. Ugh. Ugh, that's annoying, right? That's like 10 minutes of work every single time. So you give up, and you do other things. Good news, there's an undocumented feature about oil that uh, makes it so you can start with oil, even though you can't spawn it with a block. You see, oil is 50% diesel and 50% jet fuel. If you bring oil to hotter than 300 degrees, it breaks down into diesel and jet fuel. But this is not a one-way process. That's right. If you bring diesel and jet fuel together at lower than 300 degrees, they turn into oil. This has been the reason so many people give up on refining oil in the first place, but it's also the reason we can start with oil. All we do is we make a box, we fill half of it with diesel and half of it with jet fuel, and we end up with oil. See how it turns into oil? So. Green is oil, blue is jet fuel for the sky, and yellow is diesel. That blue and yellow is going to fade away because our tank is lower than 300 degrees, so it's going to turn into oil. Conversely, once we hit 300 degrees, all of that green is going to break down into blue and yellow because oil turns into those once it hits the temperature. The problem is, we can boil this until there's no more oil, but... Then we will have 50% diesel and 50% jet fuel. We can't do anything with that. We want to put all the diesel in this yellow tank, all the jet fuel in this blue tank. We can't do that if we have a mix that's 50% of each. There's no pump that just pumps one kind of fluid. We can't just pump jet fuel, for example. Ah, except we can just pump diesel. This fractional distillation port, which you can see very clearly because it's inside the tank and completely invisible, collects diesel. It gives us a fraction of whatever diesel is in the tank, and it targets diesel because it's on top of the tank. If you put a fractional distillation port on the bottom of the tank, it targets oil. Those are the only two things a fractional distillation point can, port can target, as far as I can tell. I can't seem to make it target, say, jet fuel or seawater. It's just oil and just diesel. So if you get a workshop item to refine your oil, you're going to find what it does is it boils all of the oil into jet fuel and diesel, and then it uses a fractional distillation port to siphon off all of the diesel until you just have jet fuel, at which point you pump the jet fuel into the jet fuel tank. You can already see the split happening here. Now, the reason it's already splitting, even though we're not at 300 degrees, is because the oil passing through the boilers is already at 300. The oil in the tank isn't at 300 yet, but it will be soon, at which point it'll be a very fast process. Anyway, we're doing the same thing. We're boiling until there's no more oil left, and we're siphoning off the diesel as fast as we can. The problem is... Um, Going, because it's a fractional distillation port, because it gives us a fraction of whatever is in the tank, uh, I don't think that's why it's named that, but that's what it does. Going from 500 liters of diesel to 400 liters of diesel is fairly fast. 
going from 5 liters of diesel to 4 liters of diesel is roughly the same speed. So if we wanted to rely on a fractional distillation port, we would run into an issue where the last, you know, 10% takes as much energy as the other 90% because we have to keep boiling it like this. See how it's boiling now? If we stop boiling it, the diesel is going to recombine with the jet fuel and we'll have oil again. So that means we got to keep boiling it and boiling it and boiling it and boiling it and that's where the failure happens because that's what people do. People will keep boiling the tank while they're extracting the diesel and it'll just boil forever. Like they'll spend an hour extracting diesel and just keep boiling it. And that is a huge waste of fuel. That's like 90% of the fuel you use is wasted because you're just trying to get that last little bit of diesel. So that's not what we do. We do boil the tank as you can see and once the tank is properly boiled, we go into simmer mode. This is where we're just draining off as much of the diesel as we feel comfortable with. At some point, we're going to be left with only a little bit of diesel and a lot of jet fuel. And instead of waiting the same amount of time to get rid of that little bit of diesel, what we do is we pump the diesel jet fuel mix into the cold tank up here. The cold tank just lets it recombine. It's room temperature. So that diesel jet fuel mix turns into a jet fuel oil mix because that small amount of diesel combines with a similarly small amount of jet fuel to turn into oil and you're left with a lot of jet fuel and a little bit of oil. Why is that better? Well, because it's stable at room temperatures. That's why. <laughs> we could just leave it in the cold tank forever. It doesn't need to be heated. We're not wasting fuel heating it anymore. This is enormously effective because we can simply use our oil setup, this, to pull the oil out for free. The tank sits there, the fraction, here we're dumping it right now. The tank just sits there. It takes no energy to use that fractional distillation port. So we can just let it fractionally distillate forever or forever, however long we want without ever needing to do anything. It's free. But it does take a while because uh, there's, you know, it slows down. The less oil is in that tank, the slower the distillation port works, which is why you see this centrifuging marker here. The centrifuge is this, and it's what you use to clean up oil spills. If you find an oil spill, you suck up the oil spill. And what happens is you use a centrifuge to separate the oil from the seawater. Well, it turns out that it just separates oil from everything. So we can use the same centrifuge to separate the oil from our oil jet fuel mix and have just more pure jet fuel. And obviously all of the oil we take either from the centrifuge or from the distillation port just comes right back down into this hot tank because it just gets remelted. No big deal, right? Now the centrifuge does take energy. Spinning it is a little challenging because people don't know what gearboxes are. I've seen so many people like, how do I use the centrifuge? Getting it to five rotations per second is super difficult. It's like, no, it's, it's not. Just use a gearbox. But it does take energy. So what we're doing is we only turn it on when we have a small amount of oil left so that we can get it to clean without having to wait for the distillation port. Now we're putting all of our oily jet fuel right here. I've got it set to 90% pure. So it's, you know, roughly 90% oil and 10% jet fuel. This is good enough for NPCs, so that's why I've got it set it to that, but you can in fact improve that percentage. It's just a toggle, so you can set it to whatever you want. The basic idea, however, is that this is good enough for them, so it's good enough for us. That's pure jet fuel, without wasting a ton of time boiling. In fact, by the time we finished that entire process, we're almost back to full temperature on another set of boils. So, that's that's a quick little turnaround. We don't have to spend so much time working about it. Now, you can improve the efficiency of this by boiling massive amounts of oil. Um, because boiling small amounts of oil, the transfer ends up giving you some downtime where the tank isn't properly boiling anymore. If you do massive amounts of oil, you reduce that, but it takes a much longer time to get started, so I figured smaller tank is, you know, 
fine. A slightly smaller, you know, a little bit more overhead, slightly less efficient, but you can actually see it happening and you don't have to sleep uh, and wait for it to actually process things. So that's it. All we do is we siphon off as much of the um, as much of the lightest fuel, the diesel, as we feel is necessary, and then we transfer the diesel jet fuel mix up to the cold tank where it turns into a jet fuel oil mix, and we can siphon off the oil at our leisure, either using a centrifuge, which is just a toggle to set when to turn it on, or by letting the fractional distillation port do the work. This is incredibly profitable because the only thing we're spending here is diesel and we're using it to make more diesel. So let's talk about heating the oil. We're heating the oil with these industrial diesel furnaces. I'm using two of them because that's much more effective than just one due to the low temperature they operate at. Um, there are three other methods. You can use an electrical furnace, which currently is bugged and broken, completely useless. Uh, you can use a uh, nuclear reactor and you can use a coal furnace. I don't recommend the nuclear reactor or the coal furnace just because the fuel they require is extremely annoying in survival mode. Why not just use the one that you're creating the fuel for? You know, industrial diesel furnace is the answer. The secret here, however, is that we are not pumping oil through this industrial diesel furnace. I mean, we are, there's some, but you see this? Oh, it's not currently on because we're actually at temperature. Turn on for me. I, I want to show people um, what you actually pump here. Okay, well, when it turns on, you'll see that we're pumping hundreds of liters per second of stuff through these furnaces. So exactly what is that? Well, it turns out that that's mostly air. You see, there it is. This tank that we're looking at, the hot tank, is, uh, is not full of oil. It's full of air. The oil is only about a third of the tank. The oil and fuel all combined. It's only about a third of the tank. The rest of it is air. And the vast majority, like 97% of what you're seeing here, is air. We're pumping air through these furnaces, not oil. And that's the secret, because we can pump a lot of air, and it all heats up super fast, and that gets us to temperature super fast. So the real secret to heating oil is to not heat oil. Is you heat the air. This is uh, the only thing that really lets us get up to speed with any sort of you know reasonable uh, effort. You know, otherwise it just takes forever. So. That's the big secret. That's how you do it. You use a hot tank and you use a cold tank. And you use diesel burners to heat it up because you're generating diesel, so obviously you should use diesel burners. Let's talk about the one thing we haven't talked about. That weird kiosk. Um, what, what are you? So, the issue with doing this is that you don't want to sit here and look at it. Like, it's better if it just happens in the background while you go do other more interesting things, like, say, rescuing people, which is theoretically what the game is about. So what I've done is I've obviously set up a keep alive block right here. But I've also set up a broadcasting station. So this will broadcast to anybody who's listening where it is and how much of whatever fuels it has. And you can have as many of these as you want. I believe that the range on the antenna is 10 kilometers, um, so if you wanted to go beyond that, you'd have to do some kind of uh, rather more expensive connection system, but 10 kilometers is quite a ways, so this is a good system for figuring out how much diesel, jet, and oil is at each of your stations. Now, in this case, the oil is actually part of the jet fuel. That's the oil that's mixed into the jet fuel, but it does actually measure your oil. So what you would do is you would look at this and you would watch the oil go down. The oil is not currently going down because we haven't delivered any oil. We're using the test oil, which doesn't count. So we see that we have basically no oil. If we saw this during a during the game, we would say, okay, well, we need to deliver some oil there and maybe pick up some diesel or jet. However many of these we have, they all show up. So we can just flick through them by pressing right on the screen. And I can zoom in here and zoom out here and see what's up. 
you can install this same thing onto a ship. So while you're driving your ship around, you can look at it while you're on your ship and see where all the various places are that have various amounts of fuel and who needs a top up. It's really nice. I like it. It's uh, it's very effective, but it does require you to actually um, go buy oil in a tanker and then go sell jet and diesel in a tanker. And that's something that I think a lot of players haven't done much of, and that's kind of interesting. You know, doing something new that you haven't mastered, that's fun. While we've been talking, we have generated 726 units of jet and around 500 units of diesel. We generate less diesel because we we burn it. So uh, we've generated the same amount, but we've used some of the diesel. This is um, not bad for just a couple of minutes while we've been chatting, right? It's certainly profitable because we haven't used any other resources. So that's, that's how you generate this. And of course, this is available on the workshop. Feel free to go and download it if you please. Honestly, I think you can probably build it yourself as well. It's not that complicated. Uh, so do as you prefer, I suppose. I do have an automated drilling rig that also will do this, but I haven't integrated this into the automated drilling rig yet, so I'm not going to post it just yet. Once I have both of them together, I'll post that separately. And you'll get another tutorial, another walkthrough uh, about a game that nobody plays. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, and see you around.